Why you cut me too deep? I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Aw, yeah. It's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and... Welcome to my world, bitch. This is evil. In the back room, and uh, it's time to place your bets. As they say, as they well, cut from... The as that trailer says that wasn't in the movie, which I guess even Tarantino saw the movie, and he's like, the fuck, that line wasn't in the movie? Yeah, why this did is you, bullshit. Why'd you guys fucking do this to me, you sons of bitches? But uh, we are churning along. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of this fucking franchise. We're near done. We're near done. And uh, I couldn't be more excited to talk about Freddy vs. Jason, to be honest with you. There's a lot of things about it I dislike, but there's a lot of things about it I really like. And uh, hopefully we can... There's a lot of things to dislike now, but uh, if we put ourselves back in 2003, uh, we were not disappointed even in the slightest, I think. No. Rose-colored glasses. Um, Absolutely. I blood, know, blood-stained glasses. Yes, I know. I, um, I made an, an entire day out of this. Um, <clears throat> I can remember, like, going to the theater, watching it, buying tickets for the next showing. In the same plaza, there was like a Borders. I bought the Freddy vs. Jason magazine and the novelization yes. and the soundtrack. And then watched it a couple, I think three times opening day. So, Woo! I mean, it was like, this is, this is like the horror nude, uh, horror nude, horror nerds Super Bowl. Like this is as big as it gets for us at that time anyway. Oh yeah. I bought the magazine ahead of time. Uh, I didn't have any way of transportation when the movie came out. So I had to rely on a buddy of mine who was working like really odd hours so he was really unreliable as far as getting his ass up but of course I was like I'll get tickets I had some like stashed away coin I'll get tickets for the first show the first day if you are the wheel man and we go and uh, I remember I just remember like the whole night before going into that day like I hope I get his ass fucking up to go (laughs) see this movie like let's go see this movie let's go see this movie got there and of course I also ordered this is the first time I ordered for multiple people the soundtrack because I used to take drum lessons once a week in a local mall, which had a Sam Goody in it. So I'd go down there instead of spending, uh, I would get money for lunch for school, but I'd never buy lunch. I would just pocket the money and just buy, buy shit. Yeah, buy shit at Sam Goody. So I eventually got down there. I was like, I want to get the soundtrack. And I had two other friends. They're like, I want the soundtrack too. So I was like, can I get three copies of the Freddy vs. Jason soundtrack, please? <laughs> and make sure I get the one that has the two faces versus versus instead of the just Freddy or just Jason face. Because... I get that rights because this is my shit. I didn't know they released multiple covers. I had the same one yeah. you did them with the two faces. Um, they did all three. They had a more of a Jason one, more of a Freddy one, and then the combined one. Nice. Yeah, you got to have the combined. So yeah, like, <laughs> one buddy's like, "How come you get the combined?" I was like, "Cuz this is my. You're in my world, bitch." <laughs> Man, yeah, this movie. Uh, more so than any film in either franchise, as far as I'm concerned, it uh, needed that communal experience. As much as I hate people and I, I like watching movies in a quiet room all by myself, this movie totally benefited from that communal experience. It was like a fucking rock concert, dude. Like people standing up and cheering for the kills and, you know, hooting and hollering for the. Uh, Catherine Isabella stunt double breasts in the shower and uh, all that stuff. And uh, why am I blanking on her name? Odessa Monroe, the girl who is nude at the beginning of the film. Yeah, lots of cheering. <laughs> I don't know why you blank on her name. It's not like she had this, she had such character development. We had such time to get to know her <laughs> and her naked body. I don't know why you would blank on her name like that. Uh, I was, didn't even know she had a fucking name. Yeah, she's also the girl in Final Destination 2 riding on the back of the motorcycle who flashes them. I'm starting to see a motif here. Yes, yeah. She has a, you know, she she's pigeonholed. <laughs> she's typecast. Yeah, she, she had a great early aughts career and then just vanished. <laughs> uh, to the stripper pole down the block. No, I have no idea. 
Uh, although, sidebar, uh, because I was so obsessed with her naked body, I did a weird, creepy thing that you do now because you have social media. I internet sleuthed and found her on Facebook, and she's uh, uh, very political, shall we say, and and not the type of political that we enjoy. <laughs> so, oh, she's brain damaged. That's yes, a bummer. there you go. So, um, but enough That's of that unfortunate political jargon about the breasts. Yeah, the <laughs> let's let's tr- let's transport back to 2003, back to dial-up internet, which uh, I know we'll have to pipe in the uh, the audio for the trailer for this because it's warranted more than anything we ever done uh, is to hear the audio of this trailer because. This in dial-up internet days, for those of you who uh, I'm sure all of our listeners are of our age group know know what I'm talking <laughs> about. But just in case there's some there's some youngins that listen to us, back in those days, <laughs> if I wanted to watch a video on the internets that was let's say three minutes long, I had to dedicate a good six to eight hours yes. of downloading. And that's not to keep it on the computer. That's just to watch it once. Yep, yep. Because you couldn't just fucking and refresh it. You had to re-download it. Yep, had to re-download it every time. Like, if I turned the computer off, it was gone. I had to redo it again. And I downloaded this trailer no less than probably eight times. Watching it, like, an inch by an inch on your fucking real player or whatever. Yes, no bigger than what your phone screen looks like today. Like, that's... That's about the size of it. Smaller, and like a flip phone, like over a fucking... and over again. And this is on top of checking Fangoria.com and getting updates on the movie because this, like we said in the last episode, a ten-year odyssey yeah. to get this movie made. Tons of spec scripts, good and yeah, shit scripts out there you could read. Which can't lie, read a couple of them, including the one about the Fredheads cult. Mm-hmm. tried reading some of these scripts and downloading these trailers like this is about as nerdy internet like as I as you could get that I maybe I ever gotten for a movie was this one <laughs> yeah and I'm in the exact same boat um, because it was such a big deal you know um, like I said I, I skipped school I made an entire day for this movie um, and went back August 18th times. I remember the day yep. so and I went back multiple weekends in a row until it stopped being in theaters. It was one of those things. It was like, well, how many times can I see this? Uh, because I knew with the cliffhanger style of an ending, as much as I, I don't like Ronnie Yu and whatever, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, like, I knew that if this made money, we were guaranteed more Freddy or more Jason. I was already of that mindset as a high schooler. I was like, well, if you don't watch it or if you are an asshole and you use like Kazaa or LimeWire and you download it, <laughs> then then we're fucked. You know, we're in that age of these movies need to make money because if you remember right, Jason X happened two years prior and uh, did not do well at all. I don't know if the movie would have done tremendously better if it hadn't gotten uh, leaked out two years previously. But I mean, I was not even of the mindset that he, that, that was even a thing. I had no idea the movie was out before it was actually out. Like I knew when the trailer hit and went to go see it. I knew nothing about it being released. I don't know if I would put a whole lot in on that being affecting on Jason X, but uh kind of the similar boat i was constantly getting questioned by people well who do you think's gonna win who do you think's gonna win and being a wrestling fan i already knew like motherfucker nobody's gonna win Mm -hmm. yeah like you can't alienate half of the audience like it's gonna end very ambiguously or they have to they have to fight for a little bit and then turn towards a third party yep but there will not be a clear cut winner regardless of what they tell you that's just to get you in the theater. I was like, it's not going to be a clear right. cut winner. You can't do that. And I believe that there was some early stuff going on where they were kind of gunning <clears throat> towards that. Freddie and Jason fighting until the very end where they seem to uh, encounter Pinhead. And there's Yeah, that's in that's in like the the Never Sleep Again and Chris Lake Memories book is uh, they would have liked them to get blown up 
They end up in hell. The fight continues in hell. Chains come up and separate the two. Then Pinhead emerges. All right, gentlemen, what seems to be the problem here? And then that's, that's how the, it is. Yeah, and see... Um, I'm that right. would happen today. Yes. I will go ahead and say, I don't care who uh, tries to counter me on this. I will say Freddy versus Jason set a new template that is being used today. To this because day. To this day, because Freddy versus Jason worked, we got Batman versus Superman, yep. Alien versus Predator, yep. and then people started realizing, oh, if we add more icons into a movie, it'll do better. I.e., that's where we get the Avengers, mm -hmm. the Justice League, the Expendables, every all all these things, in my opinion, are an echo of Freddy vs. Jason. That's absolutely 100% true, dude. Um, because this movie was a box office juggernaut. This movie changed the game. People who weren't even massive Freddy fans were watching it because they were Jason fans, or vice versa, uh, or just horror fans in general. Not not just you, you just the the title alone would draw people in. Like you couldn't name this thing anything but Freddy versus Jason. That right. alone is like, well, I gotta at least come see what this is about. And it's very uh, uh, open for uh, <laughs> if you're an MMA fan, and and you know that I'm an MMA fan. Uh, we refer to people who just watch it off and on as a casual. So, you know, they don't necessarily know uh, everybody's stats. They don't know their records. They don't know their backstories. They don't know all of this stuff. But they pick a, f a fighter that has a hype train, and they latch on, and that's the greatest fighter of all time, and they're just called a casual. And horror kind of has that as well. Um, and with a movie like Freddy vs. Jason... You don't need to be a Freddy fan or a Jason fan. You just want to watch. What's the big deal? You know what I mean? Like, what's the big deal? What's going on? This is a new horror movie. They're both in it. Uh, and you'll go. It, same thing with the new Halloween stuff going on when thousands upon thousands of people watch these new Halloween movies and go, but where's Josh Hartnett? Where's, what happened? They cut, they cut his head off. What happened? She fell off the... She fell off the mental institution and died. No. Uh, I'd be like, sit down, sit down, Philip. We have so much to show you on this <laughs> franchise. That'll blow your head clean off. Yes. So uh, it's okay. And there's room in the sandbox for everybody. So, uh, but this, I think, was really that uh, turning of the tide for the casual fan. Because you, uh, you, you get enough backstory in the prologue. Just yeah. enough. But you don't need to know everything about Jason or everything about Freddy because there's going to kind of be like a previously on both franchises at the beginning. Eh, kind of, but I really feel this is a more of a Nightmare on Elm Street film featuring Jason yes. than the other way around. But that's that's the battle of the studios because if Paramount got had kept kept the Friday franchise and acquired the Elm Street, it would have been the same thing. They would have well, just done a Friday film that somehow incorporated well, Freddy. And here's but the since thing. it's New Line... It's the flips. I, I, th I think from a production standpoint and from a, a, a script standpoint and everything, you have to base the primary story around the villain or the character with the most ability to have a backstory and to emote and to, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you could have done it a way where Jason was the primary focus but I feel like it would feel more like a straightforward slasher film just featuring Freddy. The way that they did it here, like you said, it definitely leans <clears throat> heavy on the Elm Street side. But that's because there's so much more lore and so much more to actually explore with the Weston Hills stuff, the Hypnosil, um, you know, the town covering it up. With with Jason, it's pretty cut and dried. Uh he supposedly drowned. His mom killed everybody there. She got killed. He came back. Like it doesn't. It doesn't feel as nuanced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I can I can see that. I can. I just have. I know a lot of Friday fans I've seen and heard or like feels kind of slighted that it's like, oh, it seems to be more leaning towards this guy than than the other guy. Right. But uh, but speaking of Jason, uh. This is when we got that Fangoria article back in the day of, okay, Kane is out. Mm. We don't know who's going to be Jason now. How uh, how did you handle that news? Because it was I was like, immediately like, 
I'm still gonna go see it, but I'm deflated at the moment. Yeah, um, that was that was the old one-two blow for horror fans, and, and uh, you know, some again casuals maybe, or or just uh, people who <clears throat> aren't sold on Kane's performance were open to somebody new. And I was very defiant. Yeah, casuals, casuals don't go, don't give a fuck. They, they We're don't. the only ones that gave a fuck. We're the ones that wanted. I know you were renting the same boat. Wanted what I wanted. I wanted a part seven Jason versus a part four Freddy. Right. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, and we we didn't get that necessarily. But um, Ken Kurzinger, uh, in my opinion, still to this day, one of the worst Jasons. I'm not a I'm not a big fan of him. Um, I don't like the wardrobe. I don't like the uh, the cow. Yeah, you hate you hate jacket Jason. <laughs> I do. Jacket Jason is the worst for me. But the little tufts of hair. I don't like the mask. Feels like elongated and skinny. I don't like the his skin being like charcoal black. I don't know what it is. It's just and waterlogged. They, I thought looking at it. Yeah. But. And the Coming off of boots. part nine and ten, I was like, "Oh, this definitely looks more like Jason than the last couple." Oh, and I, even though we get to see, we have to see his eye in this one. I was more fine with his the eye here than the eye of Kane in part ten. Yeah, um, this is leaps and bounds better than the uh, design for him, him and Jason X. I don't think it's better Shh. than his look in Jason Goes to Hell because I love. The like kind of bulbous meatball head look of Jason goes to hell, but uh, that's here, fine on its own. But for a if I'm going in a versus contest, I I want the closest assimilation to a seven or eight Jason, yeah. and this is the closest it got to it. Again, this is this is in, it's in a, this movie rides a super weird fine line of being very faithful and making everything count. But then shortchanging in weird avenues, like not getting Betsy Palmer for yeah. Mama Voorhees, going with somebody outside of Kane for for Jason, just little things like that. You're like, oh, well, that's kind of strange. But it was more fan service than we were ever used to getting, which is why I think we had those rose colored glasses about it. Because like this movie did so much more than what we were used to anybody ever doing for us. Yeah, and uh, it did kind of end up following that early 2000s trend of well, let's cast uh you know a rapper or an R&B singer someone <laughs> someone large you know let's let's put some type of a name it's not necessarily like uh, you know a a big name but i mean destiny's child was was pretty that massive was big. at the time pretty big. and no bullshit i totally talked one of my friends into watching this movie he's not a horror fan at all but i totally talked him into the movie just by saying Dude, Kelly Rowland gets the shit knocked out of her up against the tree. <laughs> it's like, I don't like Disney's Child. I'll watch it. That's a good selling got point, him. for sure. I um, got him. But speaking of cast, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we talked about this before about uh, that brown panty achievement does not always go to a female. It goes to someone I just don't want to see die. And this movie has one of the most awesome characters in either franchise ever and i would love to meet this dude one day we are huge fans go see his rampage franchise if you get a chance to because those are fucking awesome they are brendan fucking fletcher yes so that's the brand that's your brown panty award uh I he like is so goddamn cool and perfect for this franchise mm -hmm. and i don't want he should not die I don't want him to see it, see him die. You can kill Jason Ritter. Oh God, I hate any time at any point. I would be fine with it. His facial reactions are kind of weird in places. Like I'm not sure if he's looking sad or mad laughing. or like he's gonna laugh. Yeah, he's fighting back a sneeze. That's kind of his like you know a nostril <laughs> acting. Uh, Billy Butler calls it nostril <laughs> acting, where you kind of flare the nostrils and stuff. But uh, that's one thing that is worth bringing up is that uh, originally Brad Renfro was going to yeah. play that role and was cast and had already done, uh, you know, readings and screen tests and shit with, uh, Monica Kina, mm -hmm. who I hate, by the way, I hate Monica Kina. I'm on the Monica Kina murder train, but, um, I like Monica. 
and so so they were he was going to be in the film and then uh tragedy struck and uh he you know was no longer with us so they cast i guess their runner up which was the son of john ritter jason ritter and uh tie in back to bride of chucky yep and it's a big misstep as far as i'm concerned he's one of the worst characters in the movie yeah, he he conveys uh emotion weird like this how is like i just said like how his face looks and he's like i saw your dad kill, kill your mom like <laughs> are you about to laugh about this like yeah. what <laughs> what are you trying to do here? Again, yeah, the polar opposite of Blin, uh, Brennan Fletcher's character. He is just off the wall, silly. I love every line he has. His mm-hmm. death is even cool. I really wish I could have got more of him. Yeah, like, I wish so. Wish we could switch those spots. Yeah, because he's uh, Freddy's first victim in the movie. First and essentially oh. only, really. Freddy. Yeah. Freddie doesn't more or less. Freddie doesn't get to do a whole lot of damage in this film, which um, is why we have the conflict at all. Because the whole plot line of this story is they're both dead, they're both in hell, which I guess that's our plot line. Both of these characters are dead and in hell, and the only way for Freddie to make a comeback is he needs to instill fear in the town of Springwood, Ohio. So he resurrects Jason. Makes his ass walk from New Jersey to Ohio <laughs> on foot to stir up some shit so people start talking about Freddy again. And then once he starts killing people and Jay is, uh, Freddy has the ability to start getting uh, his powers back to do some damage himself, he's pissed because Jason's still killing all his people. <laughs> so then it becomes, oh, that's mine, no, that's mine. And then butting of the heads of these two horror icons. Yep, and then they got a scrap. Uh, as far as my brown panty award goes... Uh, you know, it's it's super obvious because his his character is the one that you kind of like and uh, you don't want to see anything bad happen to, but you know it's going to anyway. And that's Linderman. Uh, I always kind of had a, a thing for Linderman. I like that actor. I like the way. Uh, I thought yeah. you were going to say the Jason Mewes uh, imposter. No, I'm not a great big fan of Freeberg. This movie has a lot of things that I'm not a massive fan of but like as a whole a collective this movie is super fun it gets thrown on a lot it's you know but i can't help but every time i watch it kind of wince at some of the stuff like uh can't do this podcast without talking about my absolute vile hatred of over exposition and this movie it's like to me sometimes it feels like it was written in crayon like it's so childish in the amount of hey do you know this like the worst thing for me is in the school do you know why they say that that's because that's when he comes for you like literally like mm, i hate that i thought you're gonna go with the classic uh freddie died by fire jason by water how that, can we use that we use that that's number two on my list of fucking bullshit See, lines of dialogue i can't i can't say the first one because that's a friend and fletcher line so it's fine i was like his follow-up line there was like coffee make friends with it that's, i i just feel like the screenwriters uh which why am i blanking on their names uh shannon and swift there you go i feel like they think that the audience is full-blown retarded like Let's just keep explaining to them the plot of this movie. It, like, this is yeah. an hour and 31 minutes or whatever, and it flies by lickety split. So why do we need every human character to fucking blurt out the plot line every single time we're in a new location? We're at the school. We need to know the, the plot line. We're on the fr- front porch. We need to know the plot line. We're in the back of the van. We need to know the plot line. Shut the fuck up. Like, just, well, I, well, I think we explained with the Halloween movie logic. There's a lot of stupid people out there, so maybe that is a necessity. But this also had, I think, initially like a two hour and 20 minute runtime. Like when they were doing the initial script reading and they decided to cut that down to 90 minutes, which I'm like, <sighs> yeah, we today it would be that. I was like we had a three hour Avengers film. Like, we could totally get a three hour Freddy versus Jason cut. Give me that. For sure. That's what I, I wish it would have been that. Yeah, I, I will take that as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's really my main gripe is the the overuse of exposition in this film. 
But other than that, it's a very like stri- straightforward, silly, fun popcorn movie. Um, where we, you know, we got Catherine Isabella, who went on to become a scream queen in her own right. Monica Kina, as much as I dislike her, did have sort of a brief stint as a scream queen for a few years. She was in the Night of the Demons remake, which is phenomenal. Um, and- See, I knew her as the bitchy character from Dawson's Creek before this came out. And she actually died in the series by like drowning, falling over a like drunk on a balcony, like on a dock. And then she was haunting a character as a ghost for a little what bit. Like it fuck? was like not a real ghost, but it was just uh, the psyche of the girl she was hanging out with was like fucking with her. Uh, from what I remember, it could have been another. I think it was actually another character, but it was <laughs> they were totally dreaming that she was still alive and like haunting her, but wasn't there. So I was like, I know her. She was the bitch from Dawson's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely bitch. she really won me over in like the bonus features on the two disc DVD because she was talks about being just traumatized by Fred Krueger as Damn a kid. Right. And she has an excellent scream like she has a really good blood curdling kind of scream. Uh, on camera so I was like ah, I like her See, the only thing that's off putting to me about her is that fucking tattoo yeah cause you well you know to be fair my wife had a tattoo in high school when she was 17 so that's <sighs> you know. I did too I guess but I guess uh, I, for some whatever reason it just kills my Illusion. belief that she's a high school kid yeah, well none of them look like high school kids except for Linderman to me but um yeah uh, I don't know where I was going I had something um <laughs> Oh, well, was that no. ever was that ever clear kicking your ass? Yeah, kicking <laughs> my ass. Uh, no, what it is is, it it might not necessarily be Monica Kina that is my problem. I think, and I've said this before, my my big 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 problem with this film is allowing Ronnie Yu to direct this film. Uh, in my opinion, I have no idea why they got him. In my opinion, ruin the Child's Play franchise. Even though I'm not a massive Chucky fan, three is yeah. top tier. Like, Evil and I both are one, two, three kind of guys. Uh, and sparingly. But I just feel like when he took over and did Bride of Chucky, uh, the tone of everything changed and it makes me angry. And I feel, and he had never seen a Child's Play film. And same thing with this. He had never really seen an Elm Street or a Friday the 13th film, and they let him take the helm. And I think, uh, you know, as a director, he's obviously not the director of photography, but his input is the final say. So some of the way that these scenes are, are put together or the direction that he's giving people just the way the overall vibe tone of this film is uh, is a little bit of a, a mishap for me. Although, as as a whole ride, it's fun, but you can't help but stop and go, "Why was that choice made? Why was that choice made?" But we still got Freddy versus Jason, so you take what you get and you don't throw a fit. Yeah, this is that falls under that category of uh, like, well, we have so much stuff that's faithful to fan loyalty and then you have some stuff like hiring a non-fan to to run the show Mm -hmm. it's like okay that was an odd choice but i mean yeah we this was still like the very like the the tide was turning on fan input on being able to have a voice maybe too much of a voice in what direction a movie was going to (laughs) take with what they do in it but I will give, I don't know whose idea it was, if it was, if it was Ronnie Hughes, probably Bob Shea's, because it feels like a Bob Shea idea. But I totally dug the uh, promoting of this movie with the Vegas weigh-in. That had to be Bob Shea, dude. That screams, <laughs> it oozes, drips, sleazy Bob Shea marketing. But it's wonderful. It's one of the funnest things yeah. as a bonus it- feature. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, it is on the two disc uh, bonus feature. I'm sure it's on in the Blu-rays, but they did a Las Vegas like boxing fight night weigh-in with Freddy versus Jason in character doing official weigh-ins, face-off, and then like a little bit of trash talking on the microphone, which well, yep. was great because Jason doesn't fucking talk. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, the mama's boy here. He's big, he's slow, and he ain't got Guess. no style. <laughs> Can't speak for yourself, hockey puck. <laughs> uh, that drives me nuts, though, because the way Ken Kurzinger grabs his machete, he grabs it by the blade. That annoys me. <laughs> that annoys me to no end. Like, never in the history of ever would Jason, like, grab the his machete by his blade and, like, lunge at somebody. I don't know. I'm just nitpicking. I'm fucking nitpicking things yeah, that have yeah. nothing to it's do nit- with the movie. It's it's nitpicking. I imagine it was just probably just tits ahoy for, for Ken <laughs> there to just be in that environment doing that thing. Like, this is crazy. I'm doing this. Like, yeah. it had to be just uh, off the charts <laughs> wild. And he is a big fucking dude. And I Real know that big. was one of the reasons they decided to go with him. Uh, I know some of the stories. Oh, I played Jason before, but yeah, I know yeah. there were. There were talks. I don't know if it was again. I don't know if it was. I think probably Ronnie. You uh, really wanted a mountain of a man versus a little scrawny little dude with uh, which I, I've not met Robert England or see him seen him in person. But I know he's a relatively small guy. He's like five. We seven. have met Ken, and Ken is a mountain of a man for sure. And another thing, I will give Ronnie you some credit because he wanted Jason to be Frankenstein esque. Yeah. That's like the big thing in all the special features. Like, hey, I, you know, Frankenstein is a cray, like a crazy samurai. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it really shows when you look at like him walking through the woods at the beginning that like just super slow lumbering. lumbering yeah. Um, and the jacket must be a Frankenstein thing. Like that must be a Frankenstein design point because Frankenstein always wore like a fucking suit kind of thing um, kind of it also hides more of a shit you don't want to be seen i i e you know the where the sleeve ends on jason in part eight mm-hmm. kind of thing yeah cover more of them up it's less you have to worry about yeah it's less makeup essentially and um, easier to cover up shit when things start getting messy because oh, uh, i don't know how this movie did not get uh the ranking for highest blood like by gallon for a long time because man is there so much blood when these two start fighting it out in the real world it's uh it's kill bill levels of blood like like the bride versus the crazy 88 and the only thing that saved kill bill from getting an nc17 or an x was the fact that they turned that scene black and white because there's so Genius. much blood um but in freddy versus jason most of the blood that comes out of Freddy and Jason is kind of like a a darker, you know, not quite realistic color. But uh, ah. but boy, howdy, is there a lot of it? It's almost black, like uh, Evil Dead Two levels at certain. Yeah, points. like definitely uh, Jason's blood. Like when uh, Freddy knocks the rebar off the top rung of the construction site, hey, and you see asshole. the rebar get. Up here. <laughs> Straight New York <laughs> accent for no reason. <laughs> yeah, you get that rebar through Jason's like chest and his knee. Like it looks like black blood is spurting out periodically. Like it's not constant. That's the that's the thing that makes it like a fun house kind of thing. Is mm-hmm. it's like squirt, squirt. Man, the torpedoes. Uh, and and another thing that I constantly kind of have to defend when it comes to this movie is, uh, you know, people saying, well, why? Because there's a scene when Freddy and Jason are fighting in a dream. And Freddy kind of figures out that uh, Jason backs up when it comes to water. So so Jason, uh, so Freddy makes Jason surrounded by water and it turns him into a little child and he's laying there whimpering and stuff. And you and I have had this conversation before because um, people always go, well, why is Jason afraid of water? Um, and it, and it's like, it's not necessarily that he's afraid. It's subconscious because, you know, when Jason takes Manhattan, he walks on the bottom of the ocean, uh, because he is a mindless, well, not a mindless killing machine, but he's, he's on a mission and he knows that he can't be harmed. He can't be hurt. He cannot die. He's in the, <laughs> to go deep, he's in the real world. Mm-hmm. And this is all shit that's in his, yeah, deep buried subconscious, which is why you go to a therapist to explain your dreams. Like yeah. what's. What, what's your body and your mind telling you that you don't really know yet kind of thing. Exactly. And so for everybody out there who gets in a hubbub about that, it's like Jason is not really afraid of water. It's just 
his child inner child is afraid of drowning. Yes, there you go. And that's plain and fucking simple. That's as that's as deep as this script gets. Uh, you know, because it's really, it's just, how can we get two monsters in the same place at the same time, duking it out? And... Just read those different scripts, man. If you if you think if you have issues with how they got them together here, like just read some of the other ones of how bug nuts crazy some shit was going where they were trying <laughs> spending way more time than they needed to trying to get these two together. Like that script I was talking about, like there's literally one of them is a cult of Freddy fanatics called Fred Heads that somehow resurrect Jason by throwing a heart into a lake <laughs> kind of thing. I know there was a, t- and even when they got to the script they actually ended up with, there were initial scenes of like courtroom shit right. and being on trial. And I was like, wow, mm-hmm. like it went everywhere. Yeah. There's things went every which way but loose in this 10 year time frame of getting this movie made. Yeah, because everybody who's everybody uh, took a crack at the script from, uh, including Robert England. Yeah, Peter Jackson. <laughs> Robert England, I believe Tarantino did do a draft or was in talks to do a draft. Uh, just pretty much everybody. But teasing me with that shit. That like, would be amazing. Tarantino doing yeah. a straightforward horror film. Yes, because we got it. That we got that rumor of it with this movie, and the rumor of it with uh, uh, Halloween Six that mm-hmm. he was potentially writing one back then. It's like, quit teasing me with this fucking shit. Give me a Tarantino horror movie, goddammit. it. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we'd have to deal with a bunch of fans going fucking bananas like with the Rob Zombie stuff the the fan base is uh, you know rabid they're like oh they either fucking love it or they hate it and uh, you know it no gets, one loves anything anymore this is 2021 right. everyone hates everything everyone so just expect everything. everyone to hate it and move on so yeah then if Tarantino was to do, do a horror movie people would be like oh he's gonna have his cool hip dialogue and he's gonna have the n-word and this and that yes because that's how Tarantino writes and let him do it. Uh, but either way, uh, if it wasn't, it wasn't, we would hire Mick G. So fuck off. Yes. <laughs> but dude, let me say, uh, as far as a, a movie promising to deliver, you know, a lot of movies, uh, set you up with a trailer and, and, and give you the warm fuzzies. And then they don't deliver on the night. It, you know, you, you leave and you go, well, I saw that. And you're a little let down. Uh, yeah. As far as Freddy versus Jason goes, walking out of the... Th- I'm getting goosebumps right now. Walking out of the theater after that experience, uh, despite silly dialogue or silly exposition, whatever, the monsters fighting 100% delivered. And rather than just give us one, they had to have one where Freddy has home field advantage. They had to have one where... Jason technically has home field advantage, you know? So we got a couple of really good lengthy fights too. Not just like, oh, they're going to, you know, swing at each other for 20 seconds and it's over. Yeah, not not close up. So just sharp shit in the other sharp shit like a Transformers movie. We got to actually see what the fuck was going on in the fights. Yeah, it wasn't. I'm looking at you, AVP. I'm looking at you. Uh, And it wasn't a Mike Tyson fight. You know what I mean? It wasn't all this build up and over, which is what I kind of expected. They had great great moments of peace like i love when freddy is doing his straight up some kind of mma shit where he jumps up the back of jason and (laughs) kicks like his knee like or the back of his heel into his into his gut and it kills me every time it's probably my favorite part of the fights is when at the end when jason throws freddy halfway out the window in the cabin Mm -hmm. and then runs him down through all the other windows like a bar tab i'm like oh my well and and again (laughs) that gets me every time i fucking love it and you get the classic freddy like "Ah," (laughs) yell the whole time too i'm like that shit i love it well and it also it really appeals obviously you know you and i have not uh necessarily matured much from our high school <laughs> years but uh I, I like to think whatever that, i've got a house now i'm mature <laughs> yeah right uh filled with a bunch decorated of decorated it with toys and shit but you know um it really did appeal to our 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 teenage sensibilities of uh right down right from the first 30 seconds here's some nudity here's uh you know here's a little bit of backstory here's some characters getting bumped off but here's the the main fights feel 
so big. They feel so uh like a Epic. like a like a WrestleMania. They, it feels yeah. like you waited so long for WrestleMania, you know, like it's it's Hogan versus Andre, it's Rock and Hogan, it's Austin and McMahon. Yeah, where you have like goosebumps and you're sweating and you can't sit still like and that's the one thing about this movie still to this day for me. Uh, I'll throw it on as background noise or whatever, and I'm kind of in and out, you know, uh, because it's one of those so common in my house films that I don't necessarily need to pay attention. But the second the two of them are face to face, I was... oh, I, rem- I remember the cheering. Probably the only time I remember the cheering in the in, during the movie when I watched it because I saw it, I only saw it three times: twice in the theater and once at the drive-in, which was awesome. Oh man! But the first, the first and second time in the theater. When Jason flips that fucking table in the flaming cabin, that's when people are like, "Ah, yeah!" When the fucking guitar comes in, yes, so good. And the look on Freddie's face, uh, you know, I mean, we really could spend a couple of hours talking about this movie. Uh, I've hit. On- I look forward. I look forward and dread the day we get to this in a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if two hours and change is enough nope. time. I've pretty much hit everything that was uh, on the top of my list to talk about, which uh, is no secret. Anyone who's listened to us for any lengthy period of time has heard me say, I don't like Ronnie Yu. I don't like Ken Kurzinger. But that does not detract from the inner child, the amount of fun I have with this movie on a regular basis. I never put it on and go, why am I watching this? You know what I mean? Like I I put it on and I go, yep, (laughs) this is just it's just as fun stupid for you know a lot of the stuff happening but fun really really fun and was very successful in its box i would think it was 40 something million to make it and it made it like 80 80 something million so doubled the profits Mm -hmm. and the weirdest part is yeah like i said i think it spawned the whole new wave of filmmaking that followed with uh multiple icons in in movies yeah, but we sure. never got a follow up to this. We had a comic book follow up with Ash, mm-hmm. which I know was something that was talked about from Jump Street for the sequel. Like, well, we got to put Ash in here next. And then the failed thing I've heard about, which even gets referenced in the Halloween uh, 25 Years of Terror doc of Dimension Pictures going like, well, well, damn, we need to jump on this. Who do we got? We got Michael and Pinhead. We should do a versus between them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, ah, we don't need to do that. I'm like, Bullshit. Yes, you do, because I want to see that. Yes. Uh, take my money. Take it now. Chucky versus Leprechaun. Whatever you got to do. Um, yes, we we oddly have never had, outside of AVP, we've not had any more slasher icons in group movies still. Yeah. Which is which weird. Is- 2003, 2021, we've not had one since. And, you know, we it seemed like we might have been heading in that direction when... Uh, Platinum Dunes put out the uh, Elm Street remake and the Friday remake uh, or, you know, reboot, continuation, whatever you want to call those. Uh, it There was a very brief period of time where my hopes got up again, Re- you know, <laughs> really, really hyped. Like, uh, I love the fan posters. You've seen the fan posters where someone does uh, Freddy versus Jason 2 and it's 09 Jason and 2010 Freddy. I think I have seen that. Uh, those are awesome. I, horrible but awesome <laughs> right you know just we're ready we're the the horror community you see it all the time like all these older movies getting these remakes it came out again and it is massively uh successful so much so that they're even talking about making a third it that's completely original because they don't have any more source material um you know like that's that's the world we live in. We're fucking starved for these yeah, we icons. Got, we got the new Halloween stuff. We got nine Fast and the Furious movies about stealing cars and stealing DVD players off cars. Why the fuck can't we get more of this for us? Mm-hmm. Well, and you know we've got the new Hellraiser on the horizon. Um, new Texas Chainsaw on the horizon, which I know that's not facing much uh, uh, hope. Posit- yeah, positivity, hope. Like, it's already kind of, uh, from what I've read and seen, doomed to fail whenever it premieres on Netflix, I believe. So Because it's it's a direct sequel to the original again. And we've done that. We just did that with Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, However, absolutely fucking silly 
that movie is, even though that movie really grew on me and I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, boy, it's dumb though. But um, <laughs> but know, we like dumb. I do really like dumb, and so I just I don't know, man. You know, we had Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, um, blah 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 blah. <laughs> then we had Leatherface the other beginning beginning. Yeah, yeah and they're okay. It's, you see him slowly turning into Halloween. Yeah. We just keep retconning shit. Um, yes. But but that's what we're saying. You know, we've got the new Hellraiser coming out. Uh, and actually, Hellraiser Judgment, which is a few years back, where they didn't use Doug Bradley. They used some other fella, and I can't think of his name off the top of my head. He was amazing. That movie. Really? Is, he, he looked like Derek Mears a little bit to me. It's disgusting. It feels like a Silent Hill <laughs> movie featuring Pinhead. Um, hmm. But that bullshit one that Dimension Extreme put out, Hellraiser uh, Judgment or whatever. I might be thinking of that one. The, that's the found footage one. Oh, shit. That's I don't even terrible. Know. Uh, whatever it was called. I don't even know. I don't even own that one. There's a found footage Hellraiser movie? Yeah. I don't one. even know how many of those there are. Might I'll send you a trailer for it. But yeah, it's not good. But no, Judgment, I think, was the newest one. And that's the one that feels very Silent Hill-esque. And I really liked it. It's uh, it's like a detective story, uh, with uh, Cenobites, but um, probably one of those. Just like a ninety percent of the sequels are spec scripts, or like just throw some Cenobites in there and make it a Hellraiser movie, and bam, we got it, we got it, we got it, we're done. Yeah, well, and you know, it, but it does feel very Hellraiser, but on a new, like, kind of grimy, gross, more gross. I feel than old school uh, Hellraiser stuff, to be honest. But um, yeah. I I think. You know, we're just, we're ready for that. We're ready for some of these uh, icons who haven't had a moment in the sun to get a, to get a big movie. You're not, you know, you cannot tell me if you took Leprechaun from the new Leprechaun Returns and you, and you put him in something with Pinhead, we would roll our fucking eyes like slot machines, but we would be like, I'm buying that day one if it's direct to video, or I'm going to rent that, or go see that in theaters. Like, it would have to make its money back. You let a guy like Psych, the directed Psycho Gorman, Steve Kostansky, because he made the Leprechaun Returns movie, and it's amazing. Let him, <laughs> a young kid with crazy ideas, with stop motion and green screens, and you know all this madness, big monsters and let him helm one of these versus movies and watch the world of horror fans geek the fuck out. Uh, I'm all for that as well. I can't think of a versus one I would do. I would, I could come up with off the top of my head, but the, just in what we were just talking about with TCM, I totally could think of one for that. Like, uh, I know recently this, a big thing recently is starting to put, uh, horror icons into games officially, mm -hmm. which, uh, terror is the non-official, Real uh, horrors of uh, icons of horror versus each other, Mortal Kombat style so game that you can get out there, which is awesome just to watch game footage of that because there's so much love put into those uh, illegal games. Yeah, the character but, models, the stages, all great. But the big thing they started doing is putting some of these characters in other games like the Dead by Daylight, famously putting a bunch of horror icons in, uh, putting a bunch in Mortal Kombat. And I think one recently was a Call of Duty putting in. Uh, Leatherface, and I thought when I first saw that, I was like, I don't know about a game, but I would love to kind of see that as a movie, like really kind of like Mad Max style, like not a real story to it, like just just do a ninety minute siege movie of a SWAT team or a high high end military group trying to infiltrate and take over, you know, the Sawyer House. Yes, and you get that you get that conflict of the high end tactical planned out shit versus these. You know, uh, grassroots uh, backwoods hillbillies, like, and to see the difference and how they combat, I'm like, that'd be a hell of a Texas Chainsaw movie, just just to see. But just, yeah, I'm ready for more. We just got a new Candyman, which is a, a good, really good sequel slash reboot of sorts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we're we're ready and give us give us the Avengers of horror, really. 
I'm tired. I don't want any more of the. We had the Avengers of Horror, but they're not playing who we know them for playing. They're We're playing at other you, people. Death House, you terrible pile of pile of shit. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. I'm like, no, give me Jason, Freddy, Michael. Put them all in something. Mm-hmm. Give me, give me that, and it will easily make a hundred million dollars, even if it's the worst thing you've ever seen, because people will not be able to not watch it, including right. me, several times. And I've already bought the Blu-ray 3D. Holy shit, 4K edition, and it's not even made yet, and I don't even own a 4K, but I've already got I've already got my money saved for it. <laughs> yep, no shit. Um, but yeah, so as far as final thoughts go, I mean, you know, Freddy versus Jason, you nailed it. You you hit the nail on the head with it being the game changer, the precedent for putting multiple icons in a film. Uh, you you cannot tell me any different that uh, that people did not. Uh, <laughs> see this business model and exploit this business model. But uh, I remember news articles like immediately after the movie. First thing they were talking about was AVP and Batman vs. Superman. So it was already there in 03 people talking about like, all right, this was successful. Let's do it. Yep. And this is just a fun ride. Um, to me, a lot of the stuff hasn't necessarily aged well, but uh, I find myself watching it all the time. I find myself feeling like a high school kid um you know it oddly ages better than the o10 nightmare remake <laughs> oh it sure does it really does but it, i think it's because so much of the real uh freddy tone is there because yeah. you know it's it's pulling from a place of love even though ronnie you hadn't seen those films robert england was pulling from his uh, previous portrayals as Freddy Krueger. So I fucking love his uh his shadow uh on the street scene. That looks awesome. Yes. It may not have worked great like that shadow of CG still looks better than the CG of him coming out of the fucking wall in the uh in the remake. For sure. And well, man, it's, it's a shadow of that, smoke, so that bed folding and half kill, that was the first big like tone setting kill of this movie. And, and that was the other thing I remember people not quite cheering, but you could hear like Oh, mm-hmm. when that happened, and it's it still kind of does that when you watch it. Yep, real good. Um, man, that dude deserved to die so much. <laughs> like, man. as soon as he pop- that dude popped on the screen, like, oh, it- never has anyone had the dead meat more tattooed across his head than that guy. <laughs> Listen, in either franchise ever. Uh, if you get to put your penis in Catherine Isabella, you be nice. You be nice. That's all <laughs> I gotta say. Don't touch me after. <laughs> <laughs> smell like menthols <laughs> I only smoke when I drink now but you're always drinking I'll work on that next yep uh, what do you see in him I don't know but he has a cute butt um, good lord uh, him and fucking Blake two complete dipshits yeah I want you go I did like there. that hot second though right before Blake realizes his dad is dead <laughs> and he like looks <laughs> where the direction his dad's uh, head is looking like <laughs> Try to at? see what he sees. Yep, <laughs> like it's super, a uh, super like half a second to see, but I like, I love that. I love that. Uh, that dude is uh, the master of not having many lines of dialogue, but extremely overacting. My best friend was just <laughs> killed, Dad. Like, oh my god! <laughs> Somebody slip to some about Freddy. I'll kill him myself, Trey. Yeah. I swear to God. Uh, a teenager with a flask. Wow. <laughs> I don't know anyone that has a flask, even at my age now. So I think that may have been the last use of a flask in a movie well, by it, anyone. I I got some buddies. Uh, our good buddy Tony Tulips uh, definitely had a flask in high school, but I think that's just because he's a uh, you know a, a quasi. You think that shit's alcoholic. grown up then? <laughs> like everyone saw Gary Busey had that shit in a silver bullet, and I'm like, well, this is how adults drink, so I'm gonna do that shit. And then <laughs> when you're an adult, you're like, I am not drinking the piss warm alcohol in this metal container in my back pocket I that's been my, there all day. I keep my fruit punch Kool Aid in my flask. <laughs> <laughs> so I need a quick. Pick what do you got in yours? Milk. Oh. <laughs> it was a bad choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fucking sun beating on it. <laughs> just fucking cottage cheese. Oh. Yeah, I got me a flask of cheese that just comes out like toothpaste. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Do not. Oh. Oh. Sour About milk. I had a spewage. About Sour. I had spewage. Sour milk is my fucking kryptonite. And I don't. Well, speaking of, speaking of spewage, of uh, foul things. 
Maybe it's time then we talk about a few Amazon one star reviews. Hated it. Oh my goodness. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, one stars for Freddy vs. Jason were fairly plentiful, but I decided not to go too bonkers with it. We decided I just grabbed a small handful. So first up, we got Eric T on July 26, 2019. T. E, yeah, E.T. says, uh, one star. We need Hollywood to come up with something original. Seriously. That's it? That's it. Well, you know. Well, he uh, has a, he has that emoji of the face doing the chin scratching oh. thing there, but I don't know how to convey that in Man, an audio form. That's pretentious. Seriously? Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Fucking dildo. Get out of here. Uh, next on up, we have Christian Little. I hate this spelling, too, for Christian. K-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Mm. Christian Little. On August 13th, 2019. One star, horrible quality bootleg film. <laughs> well, don't bootleg. You got that <laughs> off LimeWire. <laughs> yeah, along now with your computer has, has herps. Uh, next up, we got the returning uh, ever faithful Rondell Dale Branch. All right. I'm not sure how to take this out. Uh, I would see this as a one star, but I'm, uh, I'll just read it. On uh, January 9, 2018, he says, one star, one star. Received two copies of bonus features. Never got the movie. <laughs> well, that's a good day. <laughs> 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 Imagine all this hype material and then you can't actually watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you oh, get, well, way in. <laughs> get well versed in uh, all the behind the scenes. I've got that really long, weird feature of the uh, slash slashing camp uh, summer camp thing, which I really said I have no idea what the hell that all was. Was that just like a crew like thing? Do you remember watching know, that on the bonus features? I don't know what features? you're talking about. <clears throat> You don't know about there's uh, it's on those bonus features and it's like it's a legit summer camp video of someone filming them at a summer camp like a bunch of adults like doing crafts and like they were gonna do a wet t-shirt contest and a dude just pulled his pants down they blurred out his dick but he's like this flapping around his dick <laughs> and they do like it's like a and the wrap up with they're doing an outdoor screening of the movie and right when the movie's gonna start is when the feature ends Mm. It's just a weird. I'm like, who are these people? Yeah, I don't know. I I don't remember that at all. Must must have only watched it once and said, well, I don't need to watch that. You know, break out that break out that DVD, dust it off, and 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 watch that bit again. Let me know what you think. I tend to watch so. the DVD a little bit more than I watch my Blu-ray because um, my DVD has a full frame function, and if you watch Freddy vs. Jason in full frame, um. They were completely anticipating it being widescreen, so uh, like when Freddy's hand comes out of the magazine and rips off Kelly Rowland's nose, the effect isn't finished. It only goes, there's like two inches of the screen where the glove is just not finished. So I, I like to watch it in full frame because yeah. you, you see all this uh, you see all this bullshit they were trying to hide with the widescreen bars. One, this here I make it sound like a super fucking pervert, is the beginning when Odessa Monroe <laughs> comes out of the water and she's on that little ladder. You watch it in full screen. Uh, she has like a uh, something with tape. It looks like uh, tape and almost like a like a fucking diaper uh, covering her crotch. She get quigglied? Yeah, it's like it's this, and but it's clear as day. You see the tape, and you see, like, white. Like, they didn't try to color match her or anything. But, yeah, so it's like a a thing covering up her hoo-ha. And I remember, like, commenting on that when I was in high school, and someone being like, <laughs> man, you had to have been looking real hard. And I'm like, I wasn't. I wasn't. I'm not trying to be a pervert. She just is clearly wearing something right there. It's a 20-foot screen. It's right there in my fucking face. Yeah, I can't help it. But, anyway, on with the chlorophyll, evil. It's like a... <laughs> It's like a three-foot vagina in front of me, man. <laughs> How are you not looking at it? That's right. the better question. How are you the one not looking at it? You looking at the dudes instead? <laughs> what? Maybe I am. All right. 
Next up, we got Mark on July 16, 2004. He says, one star, stupid, stupid mess. <laughs> I've never seen the attraction of the Jason and Freddy movies to begin with, but my wife wanted to watch this thing for some reason. And boy, it stunk worse than Marilyn Manson's Marilyn Manson's commode. <laughs> okay. I, Does Marilyn Manson I, take wicked shits? I, like, I have no idea what Manson's dietary... Uh, lifestyle was like in 04 but I would really like someone to tell me perhaps the makers of this dog what the point is in having two things that can't die fight each other (laughs) (laughs) on and on the fighting goes and no matter how brutal and deadly the final the ending of the fights appear to be they both get up and live the fight again another (laughs) day pointless with a capital P I'll tell you what Oh, go ahead. On and on the fighting goes. <laughs> like Joan Rivers' career, <laughs> the fighting, no matter how inane, just keeps on going. Good Lord. Let's hope both of these overused moronic monsters kill each other off screen somehow, and we never have to see anything from either of them again. Wow. Uh, I will tell you how this movie gets made, uh, because money. You know, <laughs> money, but I got to give Mark total props and bonus points. If when you can squeeze in Marilyn Manson's toilet and Joan Rivers into your rant about Freddy versus Jason, you're a pretty good uh, linguist there. Yeah. You're a magician with your words. <laughs> good job, sir. Uh, but all right, yeah. What's next? Uh, next up, this is from Alpha Weapon Forty Seven on September first, two thousand and four. He says one star. Question mark, 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 question mark. Let me start by saying I'm a fan of the Jason series and the Freddy series. And I find that this to be a true trying to stay familiar with failure in the horror cirrus Mm. it's pure stupidity wrapped up in a dvd (laughs) that is pure crap i'm giving it two stars only because it did give me some small bits of enjoyment and it was better than the monstrosity of pure stupidity they call jason x but watch Freddy and Jason fight for yourself. You might like it. It's okay, but the original of both files is way better. I mean, way better. I think- I'm just like, of all the shit he misspells and fucks up, he spells mon. I guess it's more. Okay, I thought he spelled monstrosity right. It's actually he. If I pronounce it how he spells it, monstrosity. Mm, there you go. I like. Struzel. I corrected it for him. Monstrosity. That sounds like some shit Ultimate Warrior would say. <laughs> Uh, I think he's just just mad that he wasn't in the movie because he's the alpha weapon. Um, I like that he gave it two stars, but he ended up in his review, but he gave it one star in the official (laughs) rate. And yeah, watch W A T C H and series is constantly spelled S C R I S. Sirs wrapped with only one P. Stupidity, stupid I D I D Y. (sighs) Alpha weapon. Alpha weapon. All right. Alpha weapon. You got one more? <laughs> Actually, I have two more. Right. This one I'm going to have to back up a little bit because, again, all in caps from old Stephen Williams on January 29, 2004. One star. Nothing but laughter. <laughs> How can anyone watch this horrible movie? This was such a stupid movie. Usually when they take my girlfriend to see a scary movie, she spends most of the time holding on to me. But this time we were laughing our asses off at the supposed to be scary movie it was more like a comedy show it had no plot whatsoever if you want to see something ridiculous or funny buy or rent this movie but if you want to see something scary go rent halloween or something like that because this is nothing this movie is nothing but a joke to me <laughs> but he's just mad that he wasn't getting uh loved on by his old lady i, I took her to a horror movie and she's laughing like <laughs> this is not gonna get me anywhere I'm not gonna get no play tonight baby um yeah i'm sorry dude uh just you know, tickle her on the way home or something. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, so last one is an Amazon customer. So I guess Rondell Del Branch decided he didn't have enough to say, so he came back again to tell return. us more. Uh, a year previously, on September 14, 2003. So this is hot off the presses mm-hmm. after this movie came out. Not even a couple, not even a month after this movie came out. Uh, Rondell has to get on to the Zon wow. and tell us one star. Catch up, anyone? <laughs> okay. Yes. I really did not like this movie. The truth is that it really did not have a point. I guess someone might like a movie where nothing gets resolved and the <laughs> ending is inconclusive, but not me. You should only go see this movie if you want to see people get killed. Well, yeah, that's what the butts are in the seats for. There is no other reason to see this movie. Pirates of the Caribbean is a much better and actually scarier. Don't waste your time or money on this piece of trash. 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 You trash. Wow. I can't. Like a month after the release. A month after it. And I, I like the title of Catch Up Anyone because, yeah, blood a plenty in this movie. So that is our conclusion of the Amazon Uno Star Reviews. Yes. Well, now that we're done with that segment, uh, that can only mean one thing, Evil. What does that mean? Ah, I guess it's time we play the game. It's time to play the game. Time to play the game. It's all about the game. When I play it and I can't come back if no one remembers me. <laughs> perfection, perfection, perfection. Uh, for those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome and. This is the Deep Cut Podcast, so how we do this is every episode at the end, we do a little game called The Prop Game, where you have to pick a prop from the film, but it cannot be a prop that uh, is blatantly obvious. So do not say Jason's mask, Freddy's glove, uh, Monica Kina's tits, whatever. It has to be something that is a deep cut. Uh, You're the last in line, you've worked on the film, you get to go through the warehouse and take something from the film, so it's not going to be something... um, I mean, if you took if you took Monica Kina's tits, that is a literal deep cut. <laughs> wow, wow, wow! Yes, it is uh, to get those silicone fun bags, hobbity hobbity. But uh, so you got to pick something from the film that's sort of an oddball choice, and uh, let us know if you're a Patreon in the comments what you would pick, or just find us everywhere, anywhere on the internet on our Buddies Forever Discord or our YouTube channel 3B Video, and let us know what you would pick from this film but evil it's Mm. been a hot minute uh i'm gonna let you go first today you know you would think being with such anticipation i would have a litany of things i would want to take from this movie (laughs) but uh outside of you know obvious shit trying to actually go uh, by our own rules of deep cuts uh i really just kept coming back to the most inane of things and it's like one of the uh like cable wires that are in the boiler room mm, okay. slash uh, grain, a uh, grain silo in the dream sequences. And I take that, uh, one of those cables is because it was in the trailer. It's in one of your first shots with Freddy. So I just, I'll have that piece and I'll think it's inane enough that it won't take up a lot of room. It'll be a conversational piece. And I'll see that and immediately think of the hours and hours I spent downloading that goddamn trailer and watching it over and over again and seeing Jason and Fre- Freddy on the screen for the first time in a long time and seeing him fight Jason. Like, I just think of the, like, one of those cables hanging in the uh, silo slash boiler <laughs> room. I almost went with one of the like the locker doors on one of the lockers. But nice. I was like, ah, give me one of those part of one of those cables instead. So mine's a super bizarre one. Uh, this week for sure very nice uh well i'm kind of in the same boat because like you said there's a ton of things um wardrobe tends to be one of the things we lean towards is wardrobe um some sort of uh random piece that some character wears or you with uh, a van don't you <laughs> no um you know mine is actually a uh, a piece of furniture and I am going to take the table from the cabin that Jason gets his machete stuck in. Oh, I, I like that um, because then that could be a centerpiece, not only in my movie room. I could put that in my kitchen or my dining room and, uh, you know, forever have dinner on that table 
Is the machete still stuck in it? Uh, I would not have the machete in it, but I would, you know, obviously not fix the hole. So uh, I would put a dull, dull down machete blade in it. So it's like it's never going to hurt you, but I can't not not have one in it. Right. Um, there was a couple other items that I had thought about. Um, one being the flag that Linderman uses. Um, I, I just think of the movie The Patriot when that slow time. motion scene it happens. Yep. He's fucking charging with that flag. I'm like, he should just be Mel Gibson. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of unique props in this movie. And, uh, you know, I'm honestly surprised neither of us picked a bottle of Hypnosil. I don't know if we would consider that a deep cut or if that's too low hanging of fruit for us. But, uh,. <laughs> I don't think it's too low hanging. I think it would have been fine. Right. Uh, man, that just ties me back to so many other just like fucking lines in this movie. Like, no, we need those pills. Dude, dude. <laughs> Kia, he has asthma. <laughs> yeah. That goalie was pissed about something. <laughs> Can you just get asthma? Not a Freddy versus Jason quote, but uh, still a good <laughs> asthma quote. From Deep Rising, damn it! But uh, I mean, yeah, we've we've pretty much covered everything. You know, we did our brown panty awards. We've uh, uh, picked our props. So that can only mean that we are at the tail end of the episode. So next week, uh, Evil, you want to let or not next week? Two weeks from now, you want to let the good folks out there know what we'll be covering. Well, we are, like I said, we're at the tail end of the Friday franchise. We, as of this moment in time, lawsuit still, you know, uh, hanging as a dark cloud over the franchise. We have one movie left. Mm. And then we're going to do an episode talking about the game as a follow-up episode to that. But the last movie in the franchise official, as of this moment in time, we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th, 2009, the remake reboot that actually made money and did fairly well and is a pretty damn good movie and just like this movie had no sequels to follow up on it mm-hmm. it just kind of lay dormant came and went and then we're going to spend 14 years covering every lackluster bullshit Jason fan film out there on the planet I'm just kidding we're not going to do that um, although one episode devoted to multiple fan films might not be out of the realm of possibility down the road at some point, but uh, we spent a long time in the Friday series. It's we've gone through official seasons mm-hmm. talking this franchise. It was nice and uh, boiling hot when we started talking this franchise, and it's getting into sub zero temperatures uh, as we speak now. So times have definitely flown by on this series, and uh. It's, it's been a fun one, but we're not quite done yet. I can taste the lake water now. It's almost done. Yeah, so another month-ish, and we will be done covering this franchise, and then we will move on. But uh, on that note, I suppose we should probably get going, because after all, there's a lot of movies out there, and somebody's got to watch them. So why not us, right? I can't come back if nobody remembers. I can't come back if nobody's afraid. <laughs> <laughs>